you've only been at the club for four months. I think you've had 17 games in charge. Is it unrealistic to expect Spurs to be a brilliant side in that short time? Uh, it's realistic to expect better. I truly believe that we can, we are better than that what we showed today. We built this performance on hard work, uh, discipline, keeping the, way, uh, the ball away from our goal, and then spaces will open up, especially if you get the first goal. So that's, uh, the first goal always decides uh, the, how the game goes. Well, I think we have to show we play for, for ourselves, for, for, for the fans, for the club, for the manager, for, for everyone. And today we play like, like Manchester United. To present ourselves like this, yeah, uh, it's unacceptable. And at home, where should be fireworks and should be uh, determination and, and, and character really being pushing high, wasn't there at all. And uh, yeah, I better not say too much. You picked, I believe, the oldest starting 11 you've picked as a Manchester United manager. For this day, given the circumstances, was that key? Yeah, I think so, yeah. We, we can't hide. The, the week has been difficult for all the, all the players as well. Uh, and they really stuck at it and experience always, uh, they, they count in situations like this. From you since Liverpool, and even with all your experience in the game, how difficult a week has it been? As I told you before, it was tough. We didn't expect what the last results in the Premier League, but you know, uh, I hope this time we, we change uh, the page. And uh, everyone now is rolling the team. Um, there's not only the coach that many people point out, is the, the, the players as well. But I, I believe that something happened for a reason. And uh, we have to be happy for this, this amazing afternoon we win 3-0 uh, in a way stadium difficult against a difficult team. And uh, we are so, so pleased for that and happy. How much credit does the coach deserve, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, under that amount of pressure? I'm sure you read and heard some of it, all that criticism, all that scrutiny. Not only for the coach, for the club, uh, for the players. It's, it's normal. The club, it's, it's so big and uh, the criticism is always there. Uh, but, you does know, it bother you? Sorry? Does it bother you? Uh, for me, it's not bothering me because, you know, I, I play... 18 years football, so I know that one day is perfect and another day we are crap. I, I know that and we have to deal with that. Uh, but it's always better when, you know, when the people prize you and uh, they are happy with you and you win. But sometimes the life is like that. Sometimes it's, we have to pass for through uh, bad moments and we have, to, we have to change and we change today. Thank you for coming out. Well thank done. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's fair to say um, that that was a much improved display yes. from from Manchester United and a different level of organisation as well. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, they didn't they didn't press high, um, but what was evident was the work rate, the intensity. Um, something for me that United didn't do last week it wasn't evident last week at all. But I thought today Tottenham were um, saying that Man United gave them no no time, no mm. time at all. And even when you looked at it, they were they were very much closer to everybody. See Cavani there, and he doesn't just stop there, he just keeps going. He just keeps going. The work rate is magnificent. At no stage, when we watched Tottenham today, because of the way Man United worked and how hard they were working, did they make any Tottenham player feel like he had time on the ball at any stage? You know, even when this breaks, <clears throat> it comes into Son here, bam, Harry Maguire's in. You can see the four players, Bruno Fernandes is around there, Tommy clapping and everything. And here again, look, they get the ball, not really under control, because look at the Man United fans, they're the fans. The players are ready, ready to go. Tommy gets in there and they get the foul. Look at that, no Tottenham player trying to come in there, because Man United, they're very much more organised in the way, they're not letting them pass through that. And then they go for the long one, which was aimless. Um, we see them do that a couple of times. And again, you look at this situation here, once he gets through, you know, you've got one against four at the minute, and then they're getting back, much more organised. Fred's coming across and another aimless ball in, um, which Man United deal with very, very easily. Again, you see that space, no Tottenham player, not really any movement. It's poor from Tottenham's hour will go into that. And then once it comes to Son, hardly any movement, nothing really going on. And then that ball's just, just nothing. It's nothing. It was uh, very comfortable for them. But they needed to put in a performance like that and they worked a lot harder today. Yeah. They, uh, there's a few stats there. The much, much different yeah. performance, really, overall. Well, it was um, a stats show, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as for Spurs, um, 
It was hapless, wasn't it? Oh, and the rest, there's many other words we can choose, Gary. There's no intensity, no energy, it was all very flat. I thought they were going to go after Man United and go after them because of the, they would have been low on confidence after what happened last week, but they never did that at all and they didn't have one effort on target and this is why. It was all too safe, too many uh, sidewards and backward passes. Hoybier gets a ball here, he gets it, he's mixed up with Kane. Kane wants it long, he tries to, to play it short in there. Man United win it and they on, they're on the break and this was a bit of a, a, a constant to be honest. I mean, Emerson has that ball, that should be pinged into Harry Kane there. That ball to his right hand side is not on and they, they, they read it perfectly, Man United. But again they try to play the safe pass. This is just poor play from uh, Lo Celso. That's a simple pass, left foot or right foot in front of him, not in behind him. Gives Bruno the chance to get back, and they do exactly that. Harry's not having a good season at all, and this is one of the reasons why he's trying to come deep, try to go out wide. He should be in the middle there. He should be giving his teammates options to get the ball into the middle. Look, there's four or five in there, but he's the one on the left-hand side, and eventually they get caught offside. On this occasion, look where your three midfielders are. All coming towards the ball. That ball, again, I think should be pinged into Son, it's not, it goes sideways. The next one, it goes sideways. It's all slow and there's, there's no, as I said, there's no intensity. Son's got the ball on the right-hand side. The both of them have come short again, Son and Kane. Kane should have been further up the pitch. It goes sideways. I mean, that's a terrible ball into skip from, uh, from Hoybier, albeit it's a terrible touch. The rest is absolutely fantastic from Manchester United, from Ronaldo and for, uh, for Cavani. And again, Emerson, not many that <laughs> options. And what is it? A long, hopeful ball into the box and nothing. And he just didn't look like scoring the goals and uh, goals today. Nine goals in ten games. There's only Norwich and Leeds, and Leeds have played a game less that have scored less goals than, than yeah. Tottenham. And Tottenham had more possession than Man United today, but did nothing yeah. with it at all. They were awful. Bit of a no, 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 wasn't it? <laughs> uh, first time Spurs that not had a shot on target at home since December 20. 13. That's a long time. You just can't keep him out of the headlines, can you? I mean, are you surprised just the impact he's making on his return to the Premier League at 36 years of age? I'm not surprised, uh, Manish. No, he looks after him. He, you're getting really a, a player that's probably about 33. The way he's looked after himself con consistently, not, not for a season or two. So mm. I've seen some youngsters having their uh, attitude change, but they, to have it for longevity, to have it like he has. He's like a 33-year-old. He's not a 36-year-old. And I, I think he's got another two, probably two years left in him if he keeps his body and his mind in that shape. He's done it all. And you can tell he's relaxed. He's, he's just saying there, his example of, hey, this happens in life, let alone a football team. You have your ups and have your downs. What you've got to do is, is remain even kill mm. and you get back to scoring goals like he's done today. He knows he's such a good player that, he, you know, his form will not disappear forever. Mm. It'll always be there. Eventually, his legs will go, but he's a, he's a fit young man. But the, the conundrum for Solskjaer is, while he is scoring, and he's got, I think, seven in all comps now, is with Atlanta to come midweek and then City in the derby at the weekend, can he start three games in a week? Well, I don't think he can play every game, especially the quality of the games that they are. But he, he's got Sancho, he's got Rashford, you know, he's got Marshall, he's, he's got Greenwood, he's got plenty of options to rotate. Mm -hmm. The problem he has is that work today worked really well, you know, with the back three and the wing backs. The balance of the team was better. The biggest problem has been the balance of the team. Today, that worked, and he's not going to want to go against that. But I think for... He's got options, and Cristiano can't play every game. He's been, he's been the hero a few times this season, uh, but uh, it won't be the last. He's been magnificent. Yeah. I, I think what's really important, and people have to understand, the games are one thing. It's what happens in between them games. How, he, how he's treated training-wise. Sometimes, you, you know, don't train at the intensity that perhaps you want. And that's where the manager and the coaching staff have to, you know, do a warm down and keep a two day warm down or get the best out of him because he can't train. It's the training. I think he could play every game, but it's the in-between period yeah. of, of, of rehabbing him and, and getting him back to his very best again. And sometimes even a, a little keep ball session in training at high intensity for too long is too much for Ronaldo. Yeah. So you have to make sure that he's that, he's, that he does the right things in between games. Great stuff. And we'll leave it on that note. Glenn Owen, thanks very much indeed for your company. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.
It all smiles again. What a difference a week, a week makes for Manchester United and particularly that man, Owen. Yeah, look, six days last Sunday against Liverpool, the, you know, probably one of the worst, one of the worst moments, you know, in their kind of sporting history. And then to go and turn it around, you know, today was um, credit to Ole and the players. You know, he was brave. He changed the tactics from a back three with wing backs. They had better balance, they had control of the game and they had two world-class players at the top of the pitch in Ronaldo yeah. and Cavani. So they turned it around, uh, great performance. Uh, the attacking players decided the game, Bruno, Cavani and Ronaldo. And for Ole, defensively, they've been a mess all season. Today, clean sheet uh, will be big for them. Yeah, as a manager yourself, Glenn, when you're under the microscope and so many people are asking questions about his tactical acumen, which is the basics of, of football management, mm. will that have hurt his pride somewhat? Will he have had a point to prove today? Uh, no, not a point to prove to anyone outside of Old Trafford and Manchester. A point to prove to himself and his players that they could play under that pressure. Rashford mentioned the word, you've got to en enjoy pressure yeah. sometimes. And I think Oli said it before the game as well. And I think the, their performance showed that actually they were prepared to take it on their shoulders mm. and they were big enough and strong enough you know, and good enough to do that. And they played... They played with shape today. They had a system. They looked like they knew what they were doing. You know, position. Everyone was in a good shape with and without the ball. And that's when you're a good side normally. So it's a big shift. They were quite fortunate that they've had a you know week to prepare. Yeah. And get that back three together. And they mm. look solid. Yes, they caught Tottenham, who played poor on the day. But you can't take anything away from United. Those two up front. I said before the game, I was, you know, I wanted Spurs to win. I'm a Spurs man, but I was quite excited to see how those two were going to play. And my word, they were well. Placed. Yeah, you were right to be excited. <laughs> Let's have a look at Ronaldo's finish. I mean, this is his, it, well, his fourth goal in the Premier League already. His seventh in all competitions. Well, but this is something that we're almost becoming accustomed to. But it almost takes away from how unique he is at finishing these chances. Well, I, th I think what it is as well. It's first the movement. We're just showing here. He's just on the side. Of, look, he just jumps back. He knows he's got to get onside. He's confident that Fernandez is ability to drop a ball on a sixpence. So he peels off the back, but the technique of keeping the ball down, his both feet are in the air, he skips actually to actually smother the ball. And his eyes, look, his eyes don't leave the ball. And there he is, he's in the air when he hits that ball. And the goalkeeper, Lloris, is in a perfect position, actually. And he still manages to beat him with pace. It is a top, top quality goal, it really is. Look, I mean, he, ne he never ceases to amaze me, Cristiano. As a finisher, you know, before it was just a pure football player and skills and tricks. Now he's a, he's a lethal finisher. And the ball is Cristiano. As a finisher, you know, before it was just a pure football player and skills and tricks. Now he's a, he's a lethal finisher. And the ball, as soon as Bruno plays the ball, you know, he, he knows what's coming. He knows who's on the ball. He peels off and he's in a perfect position. And I just think for Cristiano, that United team's under pressure and they had leaders out there. You mm. know, they had Cavani, great leader. They had, they had Ronaldo out there. They had Varane came back into the side. So they had some personality on the pitch. And I think it showed in a moment when, I think, I only think, I think you only really know players when you're under pressure, when it's difficult. And today, look, last week they were, Sunday they were terrible against Liverpool. Today, they stepped up when they needed to. For 2-0, Ronaldo turned scorer to provider and this is why Glenn here was excited to see these two in action. <laughs> you know what, Manish, I love this goal because they're on the counter-attack, you know, the, the chop from Ronaldo, the weight of the ball for Cavani, the finish from Cavani. You know, they defended really with seven players today. But then they got those three, Ronaldo, Cavani and uh, Bruno Fernandes. And they'll decide games. You know, look, they, they don't need many chances because they're clinical, aren't they, Glenn? Yeah, they are. I think both of them goals, the finishing was absolutely exquisite. But what makes them goals, and Cavani here as well, runs square first. Mm. Ronaldo pops back to get on side and then go back in and scores that goal. And if you watch Cavani, he doesn't go straight in. He makes that run across two yeah. yards and then he knows on buying time because Ronaldo can't get onto the ball yet. And that's the top, top quality players do that. If I go now, I'm offside. No, I'll just buy myself another two yards. He's now putting his foot on the ball, I'm onside. Mm. And then the, the little dink finish was world class, wasn't it? And that is what you get from top quality players. Quite frankly, I'm not quite sure. That's, that's what's so frustrating. And I'm, I'm a little bit fear, feared for Tottenham at the moment. I didn't see a, a theory to what they were doing with the ball when they had the ball, what they were doing against the back five, which Nuno should know more than anyone. Yeah, of course. He played it with yeah. Wolves, so you know what the Achilles heel is of any system. 
and they didn't exploit that today. And then I'm looking at them as a team trying to win the ball back, which under Pochettino way back, you know, four or five years ago, that was their strength. They pressed hard. There was no pressing at all. That went out the window. Mm. So in both sides of the game, I don't know. I couldn't see what they were trying to achieve. And that is really worse than... You can say they haven't had a shot at goal. You can say they give the ball away in midfield and, and United punish them. You could, there's a multitude of things that were wrong. But if you haven't got a theme of what you're going to do with the ball and without the ball, you're in trouble. And I, I, I really fear for Tottenham at the moment where they're going to go next. Yeah. Yes, they're still in the position. It's amazing, this league. One win and they, they jump back into yeah. fourth or fifth in the league. Yeah. So it's still that tight. The, the crowd you could hear, Owen, at points during that game have clearly gone against the manager. Well, a section of the crowd, especially when Lucas Moura came off when he was substituted, never mind the whistle at half-time or full-time. How much pressure is he under right now? Well, they were dreadful. I mean, try, trying to be respectful, they were, they were so bad, honestly. They weren't poor, like you said, they were dreadful. No shots on target. Two of the best attacking players in division, in Kane and Son, looked like they, were, you know, they, they couldn't score. So, attacking-wise, you know, they're one of the lowest scoring teams in the division. That can mm. happen when you've got two of the best players. Mm. And Glenn's right, you know, in terms of how the style of play, it's not there. The Tottenham fans are disappointed with it. So, no wonder they're booing Manish because they were poor. They were second best in every phase. And that's a United team that just lost 5-0. You know, yeah. They should have gone after them, really, and put yeah. them under pressure. They were there for the taking. They were yeah. there for the taking. Yeah. And, sure. you know, Tottenham are in a bad place.